I'll do anything for them snacks. I'm dead serious. I'll do anything for that bag. This game is not suitable for children. It contains themes of abuse and violence. Please do not play if you're below the age of 18. Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. I am Espoir Duvit and today I'm going to play a game called Little Fern. A game where we meet a mysterious stranger who may help us solve some of our problems. Or create new ones. I'm at the gas station to pick up some much needed snacks. There's been a few too many snackless nights recently. Oh, we can't have those. I've been working my butt off researching a dream job I want to go to college for. Recently, though, my motivation is at an all-time low. I had a huge fight with my partner. They're really making life more difficult for me. But whatever, right now is all about snacks. I make my way through the aisles to the selection of snacks, but... Looking it over, I can't find the ones I like. <gasps> Ugh, seriously? Can my life get any more annoying? Hey there, looking for something? I turn to face the voice, assuming it's someone who works here. Oh. But to my surprise, it doesn't seem like it. That's a strong reaction at 1am in a bill mart. The stranger seems amused and gives me a gentle smile. He seems nice, but I can't trust that honesty. If I did, I'd probably be dead by now. As soon as he starts showing any sort of major red flags, I'm out. <laughs> Those red flags don't scare me. Uh, yeah, no, they're just out of my favorite snack is all. I'll just come back another time. Oh, I grabbed the last one, actually. These? Of course he grabbed the last bag. Seriously? Oh, yeah, those. Don't worry about it. You got them first. Enjoy them. You can have them. It's not dire or anything. I promise. I look at him suspiciously. This reeks of risk, but I'll be polite about it. I don't think a snack is worth this. It's all good. I think I'll head out. Thanks for the offer, though. I turn and start heading out the door. I pay close attention to the sounds around me, but it doesn't seem like he's following. Goodness. I mean, I understand the main character has gone through some abuse, but ooh. This, this scene, everybody is sus. I think I'm good then. Phew. Why'd the music stop? Mm -hmm. After getting into my car, I turn on the ignition and sit for a moment, trying to collect my thoughts before driving home. I didn't end up getting any snacks. I just didn't feel like socializing like that. Oh well, I'll come back another day. Hello there. Bah! Sir, sir, sir! You may be cute, but that is rude. Sir. The door opens, and the same guy from inside sits casually in my passenger seat. Sir, what are you, a cat? Like you own the place? Hello? Why the... Hang on, hang on. I just wanted to give you these. It's a plastic bag with the snack he had earlier in it. Okay, thanks, but why are you in my car? I wanted to talk to you again. He smiles again, with that really gentle expression. God, why does he look so friendly? Something about his demeanor is so calm. That, paired with his behavior, is confusing. Can you, uh... Why in my car, though? Couldn't you just knock on my window? Yeah, yeah. I guess so. It just seemed nicer in here. With you. This guy is really strange, and him jumping in here is seriously creeping me out. I can't get angry, though. He doesn't seem like a threat whatsoever. I can't explain it. I know I shouldn't trust him because of that, but I don't know. Something about how he makes me feel. I felt... safe? Uh, sure, yeah. Well, thank you for the snack, but I need to go home. I need sleep. Sleep? Oh! Yeah, that makes sense. Oh, before I go, can I ask you a favor? Oh, here it comes. He's gonna ask for money or drugs or be weird. I should prepare for... Can we hang out sometimes? It it can be anywhere public. No strings attached. You just seem really sweet. Hang out? He even exaggerated the public part to make sure I heard it. What is this sorcery? He doesn't come across as scary or creepy in the slightest. Maybe a little creepy. I mean, his actions should paint a clear picture, but somehow... He's so calm and cheerful. 
Well, if this is a tactic, it works. Christ, am I actually considering this? Plus, my partner is going to get angry if they find out. Oh, fluff it. It's my life. You know what? Fluff it. Sure. How about the park? Picnic area at 12, you game? Oh, he's so happy. His face immediately lights up like a Christmas tree. His eyes are quite literally glistening, and his smile... Are those dimples? Oh, yes, yes, yes. That works perfectly. I'll see you there, then. Okay. He jumps out of the car and shuts the door. <laughs> see you there, little fern. What? Giving me pet names already? Dude, I barely said two words to you. I barely said a full paragraph to you. We've known each other for 0.5 minutes. That smile irritates me in the best way possible, and I'm not sure how to feel about it. He walks away and out of my view. Well, I don't know what just happened, but you know what? It's something exciting. Which is better than just sitting at home all day trying and failing to do anything else. Hmm... I just realized I never got his name. I pull out of the parking lot, beginning the short ride home. I didn't think about much as I drove down the nearly empty road, the passing glow of street lamps illuminating the interior of my car. After I got into my apartment and locked the door, I quickly start to make my way into my room. I notice my partner sleeping on the couch, per usual. I watch my steps carefully and settle my breathing. I definitely don't want to wake them up. I know how that would end. Knowing them, they'll get up in a while and go stand outside to smoke, then come back and sleep on the couch again. Ugh, tonight was weird. I set the bag with the snack down and pondered for a moment if I should eat anything. Honestly, no. I just want to sleep. I lean down and turn the lamp off. After letting out a gentle sigh, I kick off my shoes and crawl into bed. The cold sheets touch my exhausted body, and I instantly feel at ease. My body relaxes more, and I rest my head on my warm pillows. As I wind down, I recap the night. Not much happened during the day. Nothing notable, at least. I think about the guy at Belmart. What if I had said something else? What if I had never went in in the first place? My eyelids start to feel heavy as I stay deep in thought. If I'm being honest, I'm excited. Deep down. <gasps> Maybe. Hmm. Hmm? I blink a few times at the light pouring into my room. It's blinding. I really need curtains. You don't got curtains, fam? Oh. I sit up and throw my legs off the side of the bed, rubbing my eyes. Gazing at my clock for a moment, I notice the time. Huh, 12 p.m. I mean, yeah, I did stay up late last night. Oh, crap! I practically launch myself off my bed towards the closet. I search through my clothes frantically for something to wear. I quickly pick a jacket, shirt, pants, and some shoes. I think this is the quickest I've ever put on clothes. I bet I could win a competition with this kind of speed. I quickly grab the bag with the snack from last night and hurry out of my room. I grab my wallet, phone, and keys before I head out. After shutting the door to my apartment and locking it, I check the time on my phone. Mailed! It's 12.10 now. I'm officially late. I don't think he'd mind. Usually, I wouldn't care about not being on time, but this situation somehow feels worse than anything else. I sprint over to the elevator and press the button over and over impatiently. Come on! After getting down to the car park, I run to my car. <laughs> my eyes meet a few other residents, which makes me slow down a little out of embarrassment. I fumble with my keys to get into my car. I try to look a bit less rushed to avoid stares. After I'm inside, however, I waste no time in turning on the ignition and nearly speeding to the park. After I park my car, I grab my things and jump out, hurrying to the picnic area. I quickly scan the place looking for someone who looks even remotely like him. Crap! I don't see him anywhere. Ah, ten minutes shouldn't be that bad. Of course. That's just my luck. 
He probably got impatient and left before I could show up. I'm such a booty hole. Boo. Oh no! Oh. I quickly spin around and nearly fall backwards at how close he is to me. My heart's racing. I take a few steps back to get space between us. Jesus, you scared the crap out of me! Don't do that. I grab the clothing at my chest and try to steady my breathing. I'm sorry. I didn't think I'd scare you that badly. Are you okay, little fern? I nod, still trying to reorganize my thoughts. I'm fine now. Oh, by the way, I never got your name. He pauses for a second before chuckling a bit. Yeah, you're right. I'm Sawyer. Nice to meet you. Again. I love that name. My name's... I know. Oh, is that the snack from last night? He points to the bag I'm holding. I take a second to process what he just said, but immediately got distracted by his question. Y yeah. Wait, what, what, does he already know my name? Sir? Y yeah, this is it. I woke up a little late. I didn't have time to eat anything. Let me get you something from one of those food stands. My treat. What is with this guy and buying me things? I'm pretty sure I know what he's trying to do here, but hey, free food if nothing else. Wait, should I tell him I'm taken? Uh, you should save your game first. That's what you should do. I gotta be honest, just in case. Oh, I want to mention that I'm seeing someone, just in case you had something in mind. What do you mean? Oh, crap. That confirms it, then. I'm just dating someone. It's not ideal, though, I'll say. Oh, you don't have to worry about them anymore. What? What the fluff does that mean? Can you... Can you... Can you tell me what you mean by that? Sawyer? Sawyer? His smile falters a bit before he turns his attention to something else. Hey, you think they have good fries over there? I keep my eyes locked on him, not even humoring his attempt to dodge the question. Uh... I just hated seeing you get hurt every single day. Mm. I take a few steps back from him, trying to process what he's saying. Before he starts speaking again, I pull out my phone, which I hadn't checked since I woke up. I keep glancing at him, feeling my throat tighten up. I turn on my phone and notice a new message from my partner. It's from earlier this morning. I glance back up at Sawyer. His face looks almost proud. Smug. Mm -hmm. Confused, I look back at my phone and tap the notification. Oh. Well. I see. Holy Poopy. They're... They're... Sawyer gently pushes the phone down, covering the screen up a bit. My eyes begin to water. My mind is drawing a blank on how to feel or what to think. I know what they did to you. How they made you feel. I know what that's like. I also know how hard it is to get out of those situations. So I took care of it for you. Mm. I promise, sweet fern, I won't let anyone hurt you ever again. I gaze back up at him. His eyes meet mine. He looks sympathetic. Wh what did you do to them? I just gave them some advice last night. He looks proud of himself again. I, I don't know how to feel about this. He's comforting me, and it feels good. I mean, I can guess what he did. He hurt them. Am I going to see them again? I don't think they're going to be getting up anytime soon. <laughs> Where am I going to go? Sawyer reaches over and caresses my cheek gently. I couldn't stop it. I was frozen. I promise it'll be okay. I even have somewhere for you to stay, little fern. N no, no, y you're, you're a murderer, aren't you? A murderer? I suppose by definition, yeah. By 
definition, he says. But I only hurt those who hurt you. I know what it's like. I don't want to see you get damaged. Like me. Yeah, you are damaged. You still shouldn't kill people over that. I don't just kill them, Fern. I show them the damage. I give them a taste of their own medicine. I make sure they understand just how disgusting they are as people to treat us like that. Y you're insane. Maybe so, but isn't this better than killing for no reason? I slowly back away from him. I feel my body shaking. My legs want to give out. This wasn't safe. He wasn't safe. Why? Even after all this, he still gives me a feeling of comfort. Of safety. It's that cozy jacket. That nice hoodie. I look him in the eyes one more time. They look sad. He smiles gently, acting like he understood my decision. Oh. I turn around and walk away, holding myself tightly. I don't think I'll report him. I'm glad that butthole is gone. I'll... I'll figure it out by myself. Ending 5 What happens next in your journey with Sawyer? Did you run into him again? Did you go looking for him? You get to decide what happens. Explore the mediums of telling the story you make with him. And most importantly, have fun, little fern. Cool. All right. I need that bag. I need them snacks. I need them. I need them snacks. I'll do anything. I'll do anything for them snacks. I'm dead serious. I'll do anything for that bag. <laughs> Today has been hard enough. I need them. I have a mighty need. Can we go on? Absolutely. I will go on a date with you. You. I have a partner, but he's been a butthole for too long for me to give a crap. Where are we going? <laughs> he stares in complete shock before a smile slowly stretches across his face. <laughs> Aww. His eyes seem to light up too. I'll take you to my favorite hiking trail then. Sounds good. You know what? Come pick me up in the morning too. What's your name? Before he begins to answer, I pull out my phone and navigate to the con contacts. Goodness, that spot is just going right for the contacts. Uh, I'm Sawyer. Cool. Here, put your number in my phone. I'll text you when I'm ready in the morning. You need them snacks, Espoir. You gotta have them snacks. <laughs> I'm honestly just ready for my life to pick up. My partner is stressing me out, and my apartment doesn't even feel safe anymore. Who knows who this guy is, but he doesn't feel off to me in any way. <laughs> just ignore all these red flags. As soon as I start to hand my phone to him, he grabs it and inputs his number. He's smiling harder than I thought was humanly possible. Oh. He hands my phone back and starts bouncing on his heels. He seems genuinely excited and giddy. Oh. I bet this could be fun. Let me go buy these for you. Oh. Before I can interject, he was already almost at the register, purchasing the snack. I watch him as he does. All his little mannerisms and movements are kind of endearing. He walks to the exit and waits for me, so I make my way over to meet him. Here you go, little fern. Enjoy them. You're not gonna question why he keeps calling you that? Thank you. So I'll text you. Got it? He nods very enthusiastically. Got it. I leave the gas station and give Sawyer a little wave before heading to my car. After hopping in, I let out a sigh as I think about what just happened. Whatever happens, it's better than what I've been doing. <laughs> I turn on the ignition and head home. I think about Sawyer the whole way. Oh. Once I arrive and get into my apartment, I toss my keys onto the counter. Suddenly, I hear groaning and shuffling from the couch. Meowed. They were asleep. <laughs> just butthole. Where... Where the fluff did you come from? I choked down a laugh at their confusion. <laughs> I just went for a snack run. A snack run? Why? Because I needed... the snacks. Stupid butthole. Ha, I'm the stupid butthole? Look at you. Do you know how stressed you've been making me? 
I place the other things I had on the counter and take a step closer to him, throwing my hands up in the air. Yeah, you tell him. I'm trying my flippin' best to figure out my life, what I want to do, and you sit there and berate me for existing. They begin to get up, but I continue before they can somehow shut me up. If you despise me so much, why don't you just leave? Why sit here and torture yourself with my sheer existence? They rush towards me and grab my wrist, <gasps> yanking me, so I stumble closer to them. Oh no! Oh no, it's a butthole! It's a living, walking, breathing butthole! You're lucky to be with me. I'm the one paying for your shelter and food. With your dad's money, yeah, and is yelling at me constantly part of that package? How about crossing way too many boundaries that I've been very clear about? I'm yanked again. This time, I lose my balance and fall to the floor. They drag me to the bedroom by my arm. No! Show them the hands! Kick them! Kick them in the shins! My elbow burns as it pulls my entire weight. You're fluffing pathetic. Go to sleep. We'll talk in the morning. I'm too tired for this crap. Who do you think you are, my dad? Sir, you are not my... you're not my parent. Telling me to go to sleep. I'll put you to sleep. With... death. They slam the door in my face. You've been asleep all night. I just want someone to take me away from here. Oh, don't worry, somebody will. With a hammer, probably. I crawl over to my lamp and switch it off. Carefully, I make my way into bed. For a bit, I think about Sawyer, his face. Honestly, thinking about it now, how Sawyer looked at me, he just had that look in his eyes. As if he knew what I was going through, empathy and safety. The more I remember his face, the more friendly he seems. I can't wait to see him again. Again. Thump? Thump thump? Shatter? Oh dear. My eyes shoot open at the loud noises coming from outside the bedroom. What the fluff is going on? Out of panic, I quickly launch myself out of the bed and swing the door open. Immediately, fear and panic shoot through my body as I watch the chaos unfold in front of me. Oh no! <laughs> Get the fluff out! You think I'm gonna listen to you? Oh no! The boys are fighting! I watch as Sawyer throws a phone straight at my partner's head. I hear the audible thunk as the corner hits him straight in the forehead. Ooh! Ah! Crap! W boys! Please! Boys! Oh, hello, little fern. Me and Sawyer's eyes meet. His face is that same calm and safe one from last night. It immediately falls back to intense when he looks back at my partner. Hey, who is this... Fluffer? They stammer, grasping at their head, which was bleeding now. I stay frozen, not knowing how to respond honestly, though. It's satisfying seeing my partner get beat up in a way. Give me one minute. We'll leave for our date soon. <laughs> oh no! Whoopow! He showed him the hands! He introduced him to the hands! I watch as Sawyer sprints and full force punches them in the face. I flinch at the impact. They fall back, knocked out. Sawyer rolls his shoulder, stretching his arms. Goodness! Does he have that yanderish strength that I've been seeing so much? Ready to head out, love? He walks over to the door and leans against the wall, waiting patiently, as if nothing just happened. I just had to punch your partner's lights out, you know, the usual. Yep, let me get ready. As we step over his trembling body, I quickly dip into the bedroom and throw on my favorite outfit. I grab a bag and put some things in it. Wallet, keys, phone, and a few small sentimental items. Oh, and obviously, the snack. Welp, here we go, I guess. Yeah, if it sucks, hit the bricks! Ready. Sawyer walks over to me and gently grabs my wrists. 
I expect him to pull me, like I'm used to, but to my surprise, he doesn't. He waits until I start walking to lead me. We walk down to the car park and make our way through it. I try to make my way to my car, but I'm tugged away by Sawyer's hand. I guess he has his own car? Ooh. To my surprise, we end up next to a motorcycle. A forest green one with the little vinyl stickers of nature-themed things stuck to the smooth surfaces. Cool. It looks like it has a box compartment on the back that could possibly fit two helmets. Aww. This is yours? Yep, I don't write often, but I figured it might impress you. I mean, he isn't wrong. I'm impressed. It's a sick-looking bike. He unlocks the compartment with a small key and pulls out a couple of helmets. After handing one to me, he puts his on. Get ready for adventure! He beams through his visor, and I can't help but chuckle in excitement at this whole idea. I quickly put on my helmet, struggling to adjust the strap with all the adrenaline. We hop on the motorcycle, I wrap my arms around his waist as he backs out. He glances back at me for confirmation that I'm ready. I nod, and we're off. Oh. Honestly, if you had told me yesterday that I'd be riding on the back of a motorcycle, clinging to a guy I'd met literally hours ago, I would have said fluff off with that. I'm definitely never going back. I don't care anymore. I don't even care if I never grab anything else from that apartment. I have everything I need. I'm excited to see where this road takes me. Oh. Okay, uh, could you please get out of my car, friend? Come on, could, could, could you not? Could you not do that? Please? Oh, I didn't mean to intrude. Yeah, uh, I'll go. Wait. Before I go, can... No. I knew it. There's always a catch. I decided it's best to cut this short instead of humoring it. Whatever you're about to say, just... No. Please get out of my car. I'm leaving. Thank you for the snacks. You didn't need to do that, but I just want to go home and sleep. He broke his eye contact with me to look away. His expression fell. The light in his eyes dimmed. He climbed out of my car, defeatedly. Oh, and then pu puppy dog eyes at, at the window. Oh, just... After shutting the door, he glances at me one more time, his head hanging low before he walks away. Oh, crap. That made me feel kind of bad. Well, I wasn't about to get wrapped up in a problem. I have enough of those. I pull out of the parking lot, gazing back occasionally to see if any cars are following me. I drive home with extra paranoia, wondering what else could happen after that weird encounter. I sleepily stumble into my apartment and shut the door, remembering to lock it this time. With a deep sigh, I set the bag with the single snack on the counter. I realize the rattling from the bag woke up my partner, eh, when I hear them groan. Mailed. I didn't realize they were asleep. Ugh. What the fluff. Sorry, my bad. Just go back to sleep. I start towards the bedroom. I watch as they rub their face, groggily. I can tell. They're peeved. I pick up my speed, hoping to get in before they can do anything. Oh no! They push their hand against the door before I can close it. Fluff. Here we go. Hang on. Where were you? I was getting snacks. I literally told you before I left. You didn't tell me anything. Why are you lying? Mm. I'm not lying. Can I please go to bed? Tell me exactly where. I will give you the latitude and the longitude, sir. Why? What's the deal with you? I was just at the... G Suddenly, their hand snatches the collar of my shirt, yanking me forward. The force slams my head against the door that's half open. Ow! What the fluff? They walk away, chuckling to themselves. So you're gonna get some ice-cold water poured on you in the night. Going out for a smoke. Yeah, well, that's why your name is A-Hole. Yeah, fluff off, you phallic object. 
I slammed the door shut and gulped down a scream. I hate them so much. If it sucks, hit the bricks. Granted, it is really hard to leave an abusive relationship, and I really hope that anyone in one is able to hit the bricks from that thing, because it, it is just an awful thing to be stuck in. I'm ready to ditch them and go anywhere else. I don't think I'll ever be able to. I have nowhere to go, and they'd definitely be the type to kick me out, or even hurt me if I just broke it off. Mm. I reach over and turn off my lamp. The irritated force of my hand bumps into the lampshade when I pull it back, making it nearly fly off. Jesus Christ, I could throw something right now. I force a loud sigh and collapse onto my bed. After a moment, I scream into my pillow. Mm. I just want to sleep. I'll go to the park tomorrow and walk around. The trees, the beautiful flower beds with the info cards that I could read endlessly. It's a good place to just distress. Yeah. I have that at least. Mm. Uh, poor main character. Ugh, my head hurts. Oh right, that's why. Because something that begins with butt and ends with hole. The sun is really bright today. My room is glowing. It hurts my eyes. What time is it? I glance over at my bedside clock, noticing it's 12 p.m. Huh. I should tell my partner I'm leaving for the park. I'll just grab lunch or breakfast. I'll just grab something there. I pull myself out of bed and shuffle to the closet. I pick out a decent outfit, nothing fancy. Today feels like a lazy day. I slip on my walking shoes, grab my things, and leave my room. I look around our small apartment for my partner, but they don't seem to be here. Huh, whatever. If they ask, I'll just show them a picture or something for proof. I leave my apartment and lock the door. I pause for a moment. It's a little strange that they're not here. Huh, <laughs> maybe they fluffed off. I decide to just enjoy the silence as I head to the elevator. After getting down to the car park, I leave the elevator and make my way over to my car. I get in and shut the door, letting out a big sigh. I really just need a break from everything. I turn on the ignition and head down to the park. I take my time and enjoy the passing scenery. I find a parking spot and hop out of my car. I immediately head for the picnic area. I take in the fresh air and the tweets of birds as I walk. Yeah, this is nice. I glance at the flowers along the path. A bush covered in round bunches of blue flowers jumps out at me. Ooh. I can already smell them from over here. I lean in and take a whiff. An almost overwhelming smell of honey hits me, a little too strong for me. Those are California lilacs. Ack! I jump back, catching my heel on the pebbles that separate the path and the flower beds. I'm quickly caught by my shirt and pulled back upright. Careful! Are you okay? I'm glad I caught you. It's the guy from last night? Jesus. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, I wouldn't have almost ate it if you hadn't scared me. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. Gosh darn it, my shirt's gonna be all stretched out now. Thanks for that. The guy went from looking like he felt bad to the happiest thing around. <laughs> oh, I never told you my name last night. It's Sawyer. Okay, I didn't really care, but thank you. What are you doing here anyway? I come here to unwind sometimes. I saw you from over there. I remembered you from last night. He points to a bench under a huge oak tree with long branches. It seems ancient. It looks like a pretty nice place to sit. I can see why he chose it. Ah, promise you're not stalking me. <laughs> the thought crossed my mind, but coincidences do happen, so I can't accuse him of anything yet. <laughs> of course not. I live nearby here, so this is a place I visit regularly. What about you? To be honest, I just needed some fresh air. 
He frowns for a second, then starts digging in his hoodie pocket. Listen, um, I'm hungry, and I just want to be alone, so do you mind? He pauses from digging and looks up at me, smiling softly. Of course, but take this before you go. Oh. He hands me a small jewelry box, covered in a soft black velvet. It's decorated with a thin gold ribbon. It sounds like something is rattling inside. Don't open it yet, okay? Wait until after you eat. Hmm? He turns and walks away, tucking his hands into his pockets. Yeah, this isn't suspicious at all. But I'll humor him, I guess. I walk over to one of my favorite food stands and order myself a cheap meal. After sitting at a nearby bench, I inhale my food. Mm. Darn, I was really hungry. I pick up the small box that I had set next to me and studied it for a minute. What? Is this some sort of proposal strategy? I chuckled to myself before opening the small box. Oh. <laughs> Is that... a tooth? A shiver shoots up my back, realizing it's a real human tooth. I notice a small folded note as well. What the fluff is this? They won't bother you anymore, little fern. Oh. Okay. What if I agree to the date, I don't tell them to get out of my car, and I say, I, I don't have a partner, don't have to worry about them. They probably already know that. That sounds nice. He smiles brightly at me and leads the way as we walk over to the stands. The area isn't too busy, surprisingly. There's a few scattered groups sitting around the picnic benches. The lines are fairly short, so that isn't swaying my choice at least. I look over my options and spot one that I'm definitely in the mood for. That one! I point at the one I choose, but I hear no confirmation. Curious, I turn to Sawyer. Aww. Look at that. Look at that sweet boy. Look at the, the, the love in that sweet boy's eyes. My eyes immediately meet his. He looks almost zoned out, but directly onto me. Deep eyes with the light glistening off them. Hello? Oh, I I'm sorry. Th that one? I looked to where he's gesturing. He got it right, but before I could confirm anything, he pulls me to face him again. I meet his eyes again, this time a bit more forcibly. Do you mind if I tell you something? You don't deserve to be hurt like that, you know? Mm-hmm. The amount of times they grabbed you like they owned you. The glint in his eyes is off. This isn't the same gentle expression he usually has. How the fluff does he know about... Every time I saw them do that to you, I wanted to rip their throat out. What's happening? He reaches his arm out and takes my hand into his. They'll never touch you again. They'll never speak another word to you. He... Hit. Suddenly, he pulls me into a hug. His embrace is so warm and loving. Really? All he wants is to hurt people that hurt me? I see. Oh. The last choice that I did not make yet is, uh... Instead of saying, you're a murderer, saying, okay, as long as I'm safe. I place my hand against his and press it into my cheek more. Y yeah, okay. Sawyer leans in and touches his forehead to mine, shutting his eyes. He seems a little giddy, but tries to keep it toned down. I notice through his little fidgets. You know, despite everything he said, he hasn't done anything to me. He hasn't been pushy or uncomfortable to be around. Maybe that's why this somehow feels okay. Let's get you some food, and then we can start our big adventure. 
He keeps my hand in his as he moves it from my cheek down to his side. Gently, he starts to tug me towards the stands. This might not be so bad. I mean, he really seems sweet and caring. Plus, he got rid of that toxic butthole. Win-win. Oh. What happens next in your journey with Sawyer? Where did you two go? What adventures did you have? Well, that was Little Fern, and that was adorable. That was a nice, sweet little story. Not too long, but I'm glad that the, the main character kind of gets out of their abusive relationship. It's kind of a happy ending. Yeah, yeah, somebody ends up dead, but, you know, don't start nothing. Won't be nothing. <laughs> well, anyway, thank you so much for hanging out with me. Have a great night. Take care of yourself, and remember, there is always hope.